and on the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. One of the contemporary Orthodox theologians said, clear confusion is better than confused clarity. Clear confusion is better than confused clarity. What does it mean and why? Because Christ came to give us himself as the truth. We should live in clarity. But unfortunately, because of the disturbance of the world and the deception of the enemy, we are confused in many things. But we are called to have clarity in most, if not everything, in our life. And because we are living in a time of confusion, today the Lord is warning us, do you have a clear confusion or confused clarity? Are you confused in certain area and you know where it is? And are you dealing with it? Or all the clarity is confused for you. Nothing is clear in front of your eyes. And the Lord today is teaching us how to discern. That's why the calling today, do not be deceived. Why? Because you are my children. I am here to warn you. The Lord is telling us, I love you all. I am warning you all. Do not be deceived. Today we heard in the Catholic epistle, St. Peter was telling us, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. And then we are asking ourselves, is it a clear desire in my heart? I'm looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord? Or I feel it's too far, or I'm, pushing, I'm trying to push it away from me. If this is the desire of our heart, if this is the prayer of our church, at the end of each time we recite the creed, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come, then we should be clear about it. And we should not be confused at all about this clarity. Then he is telling us, why are you, are you looking for this coming day? And why there will be a time of confusion in the same time? So we read today also in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He was telling us, a clear warning. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. So it's not someone to predict it. The Lord told us the signs, and St. Paul was telling us, do not be deceived. Then people will start to be disturbed. As I was sharing last week in the second liturgy, it's a wonderful news. Christ is telling us, you have the privilege to be one of the elect. And through, because of those elect, those hard days will be shortened. So how you see it, is it a good news for you or bad news that hastening and looking for the coming of the Lord? Then he was telling us there is an encouragement. One of the key words of the theology of St. Paul, when he say, but we, or but now, why? He was telling us the hard times and the description of those hard days when the Lord will come. And then in the same reading we read today, in verse 13, he was encouraging us, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. You are different. You are not confused. You don't have confused clarity. You have a clear confusion. And when you discern what is the clear confusion in your life, you are going to work on it. Are you among those people that St. Paul was telling us, but we are bound to give thanks. Why? Because God, from the beginning, chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by the gospel, for what? For the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You raise your head and open your heart and your mind. You are called to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing less than that. So what is the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ? That you have the full assurance of resurrection if you live in Christ. You have the full assurance of ascending into heaven through Christ. What he owned and gained as the glory of humanity became ours. We are called for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. 
don't live confused clarity. Why? Because I'm telling you, do not be deceived. You, but we are different. And he's telling you and me, because you are coming, assuming that you are coming with a repented heart, coming to be reunited and united always with the body and blood of Christ, then you are amongst those we. You are different, and this warning is for you, but you are not confused about it, and you are enjoying the fullness of this encouragement. The instant Peter was telling us today in the Catholic epistle again, there is scoffers every time. And in the last days, you have more scoffers to mock your faith and to mock your sanctification and holiness. Why are you living this strange life? But he was telling us, if you are seeing God as the loving Father, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but his long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. He's showing us how he is a loving father. He doesn't want any, not a single one, to perish. So he's waiting and waiting, not because of his slackness, but because he's waiting for your repentance and my repentance. Waiting you and me to go out and to seek the lost and to call everyone to repent and to come back to his senses once more. St. Mark the Hermit was telling us, the Lord hides in his commandments. Whoever seeks him, in them will find him. He's telling you again, don't say, I can't see the Lord. Don't say, I'm confused about where and when I can see him. He is here. When you seek to obey his commandments, you will find him not hiding there, clear there even. But sometimes because we are hiding ourselves from fulfilling his commandments, we cannot see him clearly. Then the book of Acts was telling us it's the time of the work of the Holy Spirit. The last days and even from the day one since the church was born in the day of Pentecost. For these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass on the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Then he is asking you and me this morning, are you willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit when he is convicting me and you to repent? When he is convicting you right now to go and apologize, maybe to your husband, maybe to your wife, to your kids, to your parents, are you willing to obey? He is willing to pour out the Spirit more and more, the more you are coming closer to the end. We are not pre predicting that the end is now or later, but we are sure. Today, we are one week closer than the last week. Tomorrow, we are one day closer to this coming of the Lord and to my own personal way, end as well. It's time to cooperate more with the Holy Spirit. Then the Lord was showing us at the beginning of the gospel today in Matthew chapter 24. Are you very fascinated with the false beauty of the stone temple? We brought the Lord at the beginning of the chapter and then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Yes, we have a great building. But he was not confused and we saw them not Confuse yourself with a building. What are you going to look at? Because he was showing them with a new beauty. Yes, we glorify God by having a great building. But we glorify him in reality when you have great fleshly temples. This is what we read in, first, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, it has been taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body, which is now the member of, your, of his body, every one of us. The Lord is looking for the beauty of your own temple, not only the building. Thank God we had a great building by the contribution of every one of us. But again, his main focus is not only in, from outside, on each heart and each mind. That's why those real temples 
in the same gospel. He was telling us, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Those who choose to be real temples are the elect. Those who are cooperating with the Holy Spirit, we are the elect. And for their sake, these days will be shortened. Let me conclude with you with the words of St. Augustine. All who distance themselves from you, the true light, will go deep into darkness of sin. Thus, will be unable to discern the traps set for them among the way. Telling us it's time to seek the true light and never be confused on what he is calling us, never be confused on his warnings. And he's telling us, don't be deceived, but seek to be a real temple to enjoy the fullness of being one of those elect. May the glory of Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and